I'm Gregor Thompson. I'm a philosopher and a writer, and I know what the meaning of life is. Welcome to The Struggle. This episode is brought to you by The Struggle Newsletter. This is a weekly email newsletter in which I send out every Sunday for free a short article concerning the art of embracing struggle. If you're struggling to be more productive, to be healthy, to achieve your dreams, perhaps you're chasing the wrong thing. A lot of us believe that we should be aiming for happiness, but this is an unwise pursuit, as happiness comes and goes without any control from us. However, there is a way to be more fulfilled with life, and that is to embrace productive struggles, to exercise, to eat healthy, to have uncomfortable conversations, to take career risks, to discover who you are, and to be autonomous. That's why I created a newsletter. Along with the article, I also provide tips, strategies, and recommendations such as movies, music, podcasts, and recipes to help along the way. To sign up completely for free, go to gregorthompson.com, the link will be in the show notes, confirm your subscription, and make sure you check your spam folder for your welcome newsletter, and add me to your contacts to continue to receive it in your inbox for free. And that's it. You're on your way to struggling more and being more productive, healthy, and motivated. Now, let's get on with the struggle. This is episode 34 of The Struggle with me, Gregor Thompson. And this week, I'm going to discuss the consequences of advancement, the cost of a more scientific and technologically advanced society. Now, before I begin, I just want to say that I'm going to be throwing some statistics and figures at you, and so the references for these figures will be in the show notes, just so you know I'm not pulling them out my arse or anything. Now, with technological advancement and the Enlightenment came immense strides forward for humanity. Living longer, less poverty and starvation, fairer societies. However, the consequences of this progress has been poorer mental health, especially in Western first world countries. We need only look at the figures for youth mental health to see what the future holds if we don't take action. In 2011, a US poll of high school students showed 28% of students experienced persistent feelings of sadness or hopelessness. And in 2021, 10 years later, that figure jumped to 42%. In 2011, 16% of high school students seriously considered attempting suicide, and that number jumped 10 years later to 22%. And the story doesn't get better with age. Whilst the prevalence of mental health issues is higher in women, men are more likely to take their own lives, with middle-aged men the most likely to die by suicide than any other age group in the UK. As high as 36% of suicides in Scotland were middle-aged men in 2022, and these figures don't seem to be getting any better. Even as we are more comfortable than ever before, we have more entertainment than ever before, and most of us have more access to food than ever before. We can watch literally anything and have pretty much anything delivered at the touch of a button that same day. So, what happened? Well. Technology, the internet, and social media promised a more connected world, a happier world, but these were clearly false promises. In fact, the opposite has occurred. We are arguably less connected than ever before. Whilst we can see more people than ever before on our screens, and we can interact with more people than ever before, rates of loneliness in the UK are rising. And dating apps promise to remove potential barriers to dating and increase rates of love and companionship. Now. Women tend to consider economic status, appearance, and character when dating, whereas men tend to consider fidelity, loyalty, and appearance when dating. Research also suggests that women indicate that they want an ideal mate to have better financial prospects than men say they want. The issue here is that men who make less money are already at a disadvantage, so men who haven't hit the gene jackpot and who don't make as much money as their peers are of course going to feel disillusioned with dating and dating apps, because what you show on a dating app is limited. You can show your appearance, your height, your financial prospects, and your education. But it's quite difficult to show your charm, or your humour, or your kindness. So men who haven't hit the gene jackpot, who aren't well educated, or who don't make as much money as their peers, are going to find it difficult to date on dating apps. 
And of course, women are going to feel disillusioned with dating apps because the men they do choose, i.e. the richest, best looking, tallest or well educated men, are more likely to be promiscuous as they have more options than the rest of the males. So that leaves women feeling disillusioned with dating and disillusioned with men in general, and it leaves men feeling disillusioned with dating. In Modern Wisdom host Chris Williamson's words, in essence, both genders are increasingly feeling afraid to interact with each other due to fear of repercussions, leading to a severe breakdown in communication and connection. In an article this year on Medium, journalist T. Mugai reported that 59% of single men aged 18 to 25 haven't approached a single woman in the past year. This is a problem because a lot of women want men to make the first move, but it seems that a lot of men are hesitant to make the first move for fear of being labelled creepy. So this seems to be a lose-lose situation for everyone, and dating apps seem to have made the whole dating situation worse. The seemingly unintended consequences of dating apps is that they make cheap hookups easier, they reduce the need for men or women to woo a potential partner, and they reduce attraction to a few photos and a few words, meaning those men who can't impress with these through their economic status, attractiveness or status, but could with charm, humour or kindness in person, are left feeling disillusioned, and women wondering where all the charming, funny and kind guys are. It seems the best solution to these dating issues is not dating apps, but a return to communication in person. So, there seems to be a lot of unintended consequences with technology and progress. And whilst we mustn't attribute causation and correlation without rigorous scientific investigation, it seems to me, and many others, that another unintended consequence of scientific revolution and technological progress is a decline in meaning. Religions, myths and stories provide meaning for people, but science is objective and cold. Science provides us with the tools to solve a great many problems. However, it cannot solve a lack of meaning in people's lives. That comes from subjectivity and emotions. Technology has solved a great many issues in our lives, and it will continue to do so. But meaning and fulfillment comes from within. You will not find true fulfillment on your phone or TV. You will find it in the struggle. You will find it in stories. We must uncover these stories again, study them, meditate on them, and apply them to our lives so that we can live harmoniously with meaning as well as scientific progress and technology. The truth of meaning lies in the fundamentality of the stories that move us. We just need to question why. We need to look within and discover what we are lacking, how we truly feel, and how we are restricted then we must struggle to break free from that restriction. It certainly seems like a lot of us are restricted, and it seems like one way to break free from that restriction is to refrain from communicating through social media so much and be with people in person. It seems like one way to break free from restriction in our love lives is to ditch the dating apps and communicate with potential partners in person because men, women want status and competence. And certainly one way to showcase that is to approach a woman in person and strike up a conversation from thin air whilst all the other guys do so behind a phone. And lastly, it seems like one way to break free from the restriction of meaninglessness is to stop looking for it on screens and look within. Now, I just have one more thing to add. I'm going to be taking a break from the podcast and weekly newsletter for the entirety of September. Basically, I kept catching myself under pressure to put out an episode every week, and I felt pressure to never miss a week, something my therapist pointed out, which they didn't understand why never missing a week was so important to me. I think it was to prove to myself and to prove to others that I am who I say I am, that I have this undeniable stack of proof, in Alex Hormozzi's words, that I am who I say I am. But that undeniable stack of proof doesn't have to be a straight line. It doesn't have to be constant, it doesn't have to be every week, and it certainly it doesn't mean I can't take breaks. I can still work hard and take breaks. I can still be that person who works hard but who also takes breaks. But I was telling myself, once I made it, then I can start living the life I want, experiencing life and feeling life. But for now I must record every week and I must work seven days a week with no breaks for years before I can enjoy life. Which is a bit sad really. So I've decided to start living life now. Of course, I will continue to work hard after the break. There's no getting around the fact that to make money from podcasting requires a few years of hard graft. And as the podcast grows, 
I will become more free to live the life I want. But throughout those years of hard graft, it doesn't mean I shouldn't take any breaks and live my life alongside that hard graft. And I also want to be an example of why the struggle works. And this is going to be a struggle for me because my mind will tell me I'm not working hard enough or that I'm failing. So I want to show that the struggle is the way towards meaning and it is the way to live the life you want, the life of fulfillment and meaning. So wish me luck on this month off. And I will see you for episode 35 of The Struggle on the 6th of October. Until then, remember, the answer lies in the struggle. So keep on struggling. Just a few more things before you take off. Firstly, thank you for watching. It genuinely means a lot to see people viewing and liking the content. Second, if you're enjoying the content, please subscribe. It's the best way you can support the podcast. As you can probably tell, I don't have a lot of fancy equipment and I don't have a team behind me helping with recording and editing the podcast. So any support from you is greatly appreciated and it will help the podcast grow. You can also stay up to date with everything I'm doing on social media. All of the links will be in the show notes. And you can listen to the Struggle podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And lastly, keep on struggling. <laughs>